Hello, and welcome back, friends. If it is your first time here, then howdy. My name is Lucas, and this is D&D and Friends. We are a tight group of friends that get together weekly and play tabletop role-playing games. This week, we are back in the grim, dark world of Boomfall, where our group of adventurers begin their trek back to the City of Empire to return the artifact that they recovered. All along the way, their path is filled with beasts and betrayal. But before we get started, if you'd be so kind as to like the video and subscribe to the channel, would go a long way to spread this adventure to as many friends as possible. Also, comment down below. I'd like to hear from you. Well, that's enough with the intro. Thank you. Uh, let's take it to the recap. There we go. I like that we went in order. One, two, three. <laughs> and once again, you're ignoring Tidbit, who had 13. Oh, what, no, what in mine, look, it goes, what the actual... <laughs> the oh, Tidbit is after mine on my screen. <laughs> it's before. It's before on mine. And mine goes one, no. two, three in order. I, I think mine goes, goes one, one, 13, two, three. This is Tidbit. Oh. This is villain arc right <laughs> <Your origin. laughs> turns out tidbit's the big bad in the next campaign i mean you <laughs> already started the discourse uh, the poor guy's heart is broken because you gave him a piece <laughs> of his friend it was it was <laughs> he has something to bury now is it actually a piece of <laughs> Not his the whole friend thing. or just a <laughs> just random a rock she claims is a piece of his friend. well so <laughs> let's go back to that so at the beginning of the session we were mid combat with uh said uh friend who had gotten turned into uh well his oh, character yeah. card is is titled Hatham Gardener Child of the Crater so you know do with that what you will but this dragonborn <laughs> got transformed into this and his hawk got absorbed into him and it was some really fucked up shit um it was cool though and uh we kicked his ass uh, and, uh, Ulara jumped down in the hole and grabbed the sword, and Helm jumped on top of her, and then, uh, Chudley jumped on top of him, and then, didn't somebody else jump on top of Helm? I don't remember. Uh, the dog? Oh, that was Chudley. Um, and then we all got out of the hole, and we all healed up, and we were all, uh, done fighting, and there was some investigation of, uh, this man's and some rocks collected from him because he was chris crystallized in a way right yeah. he was like turned into stone and broke away that was rachel <laughs> right turned to stone in a way so the stones of this man's was collected uh to to draven's point could have <laughs> just been a stone off the ground for all we know um but uh, after that, there was some uh, debate as to whether we should stick around or help the farmer or take a long rest. And we settled on long rest, and a few people are going to go help Silas the farmer with his things um, along the trip of... Uh, uh, along that way... Uh, Grenyor and Helm had a beautiful conversation in which they totally forgot Tidbit was there. Um, look, look. And then, she was clearly in the middle of it all. And then Tidbit told Silas that his friend was dead and handed him some pieces of his dead friend. Not, not of my own accord. Um, hold on, let me explain myself. Hold on. Meanwhile, she, she, she she told me all me by herself. The tavern. Uh, there were some things happening between uh, people that my character wasn't involved in, so I tried not to listen too hard. So maybe I'll just let Ben uh, and uh, Evie talk about that? Question mark, I think it was. 
you tried not to listen too hard. What does that even mean, <laughs> Nicholas? Did you hear it or not? Were you trying to listen trying, or not? It means he's trying to separate his player knowledge from his character knowledge. That means I've been giving him shit all week about trying to bring up meta knowledge. <laughs> so, Nick? All I'm saying <laughs> is that Bliddy and uh, Draben may have had a conversation. Oh, was it about boys? That you did not hear. They may have uh, so not present for that conversation. <laughs> I think Ulara and Chudley left on first watch. Uh, Bloody and Draven had a bit of a conversation. It might have been on the walk to town, even the two of you were talking. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and, it was as uh, we were heading back. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. Because as we ended. Uh, Chudley and Ulara went on watch. Seneca and Draven also stepped out to go on watch while the other half of the party was making their way back to the tavern with Bliddy, Tolan, and Mirabelle inside of the tavern? Yes. Uh, Draven actually went in to go, since he is mechanically exhausted, he was going to go sleep and then take last watch. Okay. League of Dream. And I was also, every time uh, I hear his name. I'm sorry, just every time. Uh, Draven. Um, Draven. Making that feather I took off uh, into a quill. Yeah. Tolan was writing up a new song. I remember right. So but I guess yeah, we'll pick up. I, I believe that was the whole recap. I can't really remember much more else happening last week, right? A little bit of everything. So we're going to pick up tonight outside of the tavern with Ulara, followed by Chudley and Seneca out on first watch. If there's anything the two, possibly three of you would like to be doing during this time. Like, how do you spend your hours on watch? Chudley uh, sniffing and smelling and listening. Seneca, where are you fuck you from? Oh, I didn't give a name for her village. <laughs> Let me pull one out of my ass real quick. Hold up. Oh, right. <laughs> Droppington. <laughs> Droppington? I like it. Uh, I'm from uh, Crayshaw. The, the, it's not around anymore. So it was a fishing village. Uh... What happened to it? Political upheaval. People rise. Wait, I remember hearing down. about that. I'm from Russ. <laughs> it's a coastal village just uh, <laughs> up the coast, but I, I, I remember hearing about that, I think. Yes. Yeah, what a. Uh, Happened oh. rather suddenly. I, I wasn't there, so I was on a research expedition when I got news. What are you researching? It seemed to be perhaps a place of worship. Some old dead god. Who do you worship? Of- Can't say I'm quite the worshiping type. That's okay. Not everyone has to be. I find fighting to be fun and, you know, 
brings me closer to Empire in a way. It's hard to explain. It's complicated. It definitely sounds complicated. I'm a bit befuddled by exactly how devout so many are to Empire. I mean, obviously, look at his glory. But to Hard to deny the, the power and the miracles that you see in front of your own eyes. Have you seen his miracles? Yeah. I have witnessed some crazy shit. And I've devoted my life to him. That's why we got to get this back. She is like, hefts the great sword on her shoulder. Does it make you feel any different, the sword? Like emotionally or anything? Anyway. No. I mean, I feel strong. You feel strong? Well, I mean, yeah, like... I've never wielded a magical weapon before. It's really, you know, it makes you feel powerful, I guess. Hmm. I was hoping for a bit more extravagant answer. The, the sword is truly a mystery of what it is truly capable of. I don't know. I mean, from all I can tell, it's just a really awesome sword. But it's what we were told to bring back, so that's what we're going to do. Hopefully that's the thing to bring back. Oh, God. Now you have me questioning it. What it's else could... There was nothing the, else there. It's a shame that the Dragonborn's body was mostly destroyed. I wouldn't say destroyed, altered. Well, hopefully they give us a second chance if we fuck up. I feel that they'll accept anything that we bring back that was from the paper. Mirabelle seems to think it's the right thing. Well, uh... Lovely chat. Um, I'll go do like a round around the tavern to make sure nothing's amiss. Yeah, I'll look over here. Good chatting with you. Chudley was kind of following. And she'll start walking off towards this other side. All right. If there's anything else you guys would like to do. Just say the word, otherwise... I would like to roll good. perception for my watch. <laughs> it's a little bit closer towards, like, the end of your watch before you start seeing that wagon start approaching up the road with some disheartened-looking faces across its riders. Uh, you see Helm, Grignor, and Tidbit there, along with Silas and Gus making their way back. The wagon doesn't look as full as you might have anticipated. They were loading his whole homestead into it. You guys are back sooner than I expected. Oh, yeah, no. It's just because I had to kind of tell him about his friends uh, because someone, you know, decided to spill the beans just a little bit early. So, you know, told him, gave him a part of his friend, and... That was a huge letdown. Of course, you know, they also didn't realize I was there. So. Happy Look, trip all I'm saying is you were standing on the other side of the ass and I couldn't see you. And so, you know, when I was, it's. Look, he can make you... up all the excuses you want. At the end of the day, you heard me when I said I'm coming to. I occasionally walked in front of you. I made direct eye contact with you like 10 times. 
you know, just to oh. say that, you know, you don't like me. That that would have been nice. How could you make I direct eye I'm contact when I she's have... so low to the ground? Okay, well, you know, hey, I... Well, I mean... you know, we don't have to go that far. Well, we don't really have to go far with you, because, you know, you're just so tiny. We just have to go a little bit, you know? Look, guys, I just wanted to help him find his stuff. I thought everyone already told him everything that he needed oh. to know. No, we, we didn't. So now I look like the bad guy here. Really, I was just trying to let him down gently and give him something to, you know, bury. Oh, now he can bury rocks. He's going to be much happier now. Right, Silas? Yeah, it is certainly great to see you, Miss Ulara. I don't suppose you folks have had supper yet. Perhaps I can make my way inside the tavern and whip up something awful nice for you folk. I think that would be very valorous of you. Thank you. And she's going to put her shoulder, her hand on uh, Silas's shoulder and she's going to say, I said a prayer for your friend. Yeah, no, no, that's great. That's great. I'm glad you're coming out the good one here. Go, oh, go, God, enjoy no. your meal. So glad well, you can be so heroic. Hero Are there any crows life. around, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Roll a percent. Actually, Helm, I mean, it's late enough at night. They're in season. There's a couple of crows out and about. Not a nefarious number of crows. Not like a maleficent number of crows or anything. Hmm. Not like a but there's a Not couple a here and there. Good. I'm going to guiding bolt one of them. What? All right. Roll me an attack. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, what's a crow stats in this new edition? I don't know. 10? <laughs> Does that hit a crow? I think that's this. I don't have I don't have the monster on, manual, so I don't know what crows are. Than that web page, Will. What's what's the stats of a bird? I do. This is how I test the rules, guys. You attack birds. That is miss. Its AC is twelve. Shit. It, like <laughs> so you can kind of pick what you're going for. <laughs> Fucking bird. I was gonna serve crow for dinner, but apparently we just have to do the metaphorical crow. <laughs> Uh, perhaps I can dig into some of my things, uh, unpack a, a barrel or two of what we did bring with. Uh, after all, I think I did offer it, at the very least, for y'all saving my life. Supper's the least Hopefully I for the do. best. The lighter we travel, the faster we can get back to the city. For certainly. So meanwhile... Down. Back inside the tavern during this first watch shift, uh, the hearth fire has been stirred up by Mirabelle, who's getting a bit of a <laughs> comforting warmth spreading through this empty building. With Tolan eased in on the couch nearby as he's whittling away at this petrified feather that he's making into a quill pen or plucking out its new song. Yeah. Uh, I believe Blitty and Draben are also in here. Feel free to describe what you're in the midst of doing the first couple of hours that you guys are able to relax in this tavern. So Blitty's going to kind of have this sort of strange look on her face, like she's looking at something, but she's not seeing what's right in front of her while she tries to um, kind of see through Chudley's eyes and hear through Chudley's ears what he's doing outside of the tavern um, and sort of like absentmindedly with her hands, she's going to be like braiding, you know, um, pieces of reeds and grass that she's been collecting along the road and turning into a kind of rope or a kind of, yeah, basically just braiding it together. Starting with bracelets, working its way into ropes and sure. the longer you'll fiddle with it. Yes. Fantastic. So Bloody's hanging out at the, in a chair, clearly well into her rope making? I'm into my work. <laughs> in the words of Charlotte Bronte, I sat and minded my work and was not at all unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> and Drobin, now are there uh, bedrooms like upstairs or is this just like the this is the full thing? 
upstairs, there's a couple of them of bedrooms that haven't been claimed by anybody in the party yet. Okay, well, Drabin will tiredly make his way upstairs to one of those bedrooms. And instead of, like, laying down in the bed, uh, he actually just gets out his bedroll and lays it on the floor and sort of starts checking over his things. And from the very bottom of his bedroll, where he's got, you know, it's almost like a sleeping bag, uh, he reaches in and pulls out a small stone that has like a face carved in it. And he sort of holds it for a second and starts rubbing it between his hands. And then he puts it up to his mouth. And he says, Very dangerous weapon found at the site of the moonfall. Send help. Several needed. And then he puts it back away and settles into sleep. Uh, back downstairs, Mirabelle having finished warming up the fire, looks about the room and sees Tolan nearest by, and so goes to sit inside of one of the loungers nearest him. So, tell me, uh, Mr. Tolan, sir, is it? How uh, are you taking all of this goings on? Um, very well. It's best not to dwell on things above your pay grade too much, or people start asking questions and wondering why you're snooping around. So we tend to ignore and do our job and walk away as if we haven't seen anything. She looks almost like hurt by that. Oh, well, I would certainly encourage you to ask questions if you're feeling what what you're doing isn't in the right. Questions. Is there anything about the, our mission currently that troubles you? Any questions that have been stirring you deep inside that you would like to get off of your chest? Other than the existential dread that the moon has been destroyed and at any moment there's nothing stopping our planet from doing the same thing. Mass calamity. But I... You forget? We remain within the protection of Empire's light. And perhaps you'll feel a bit more comfortable once we get ourselves back inside of the thick city of the walls, but it's certainly a spectacle to be sure witnessing something like that happening if within our own heavens, so close to our own. The Emperor of Fatex, my dear, of course, but have you ever considered the possibility that this prophecy might be true? What prophecy is that? The one where the stars fall, bringing the end of the Emperor. Oh, I wouldn't give little things like that even the time of day to worry about them. I'd and say they're not worth much more the thought of your mind. What if someone had told you six months ago that the moon would explode and only an emperor's grace could save you? Would you have said the same thing? Well, I certainly would have believed that I'd be saved by Empire's grace. But witnessing it was certainly would certainly be a whole other story, for sure. I reckon that there's goings on up above by our celestials divinities that I would have to presume is far beyond our own pay grade as you put it but I think at the very least that beneath the umbrella of empire he can shield us from some of the collateral damage that is being wrought from the heavens above whatever the case I think our best chances of surviving whatever is going on is with him close by side. And I agree with you, which is why I'd like to get this canum so I can prosper within the Empire's umbrella, as you put it. I certainly can understand that. 
I mean, what's the alternative? Moving to Mist Haven? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be absurd. There's no need to talk about such barbarism quite yet. Things aren't that drastic, I would say. Even if the moon is being disturbed. Would we have heard news of a new king? Roll me a check. Uh, you cut out. I'm sorry. What kind of check? Roll me a charisma check. That was the best foley I've ever heard. Who came in the door? <laughs> I mean, you remember hearing something about a king getting assassinated over there, and the queen stepping up, and the people not being the biggest fans of having a whore step into the empire, into like the equivalent of what empire's doing over here? Ugh, I'm just. They need to get this um, situation in order with the nobles. Which is why we stay safely under the Empire. Yes, I... I do admit, I think I found myself slipping into a life of quite a comfortable luxury. I'm under Empire's rule. Certainly, the moon falling from the sky puts a lot of things into perspective for you. And simple bomb hands turning into horrible monsters. Which is why that even if these things truly rest above our pay grades... I could certainly hope that we can still have some sort of influence over their events, nonetheless. Oh, I plan to find the coziest apartment I can and just live the rest of my days there. I, I don't plan on doing something like this again. No, certainly not. Uh, I could imagine that risking one's life is not often a very sought-after path. Nobody truly sane would consider themselves to be a hero. Heroes don't exist, my dear. Just uh, people trying to survive. I the lovely things of children's stories. But I'm afraid I come from a world of very different realities. Calculated odds, if you will. Rather than simply a roll of a dice. Did your odds calculate into what we ran into on this little story? I think that our valor system can account for what has happened, yes. It'll certainly send the whole balance of the system off a bit. Uh, one could certainly be he expected that the marketplace about the Kynum and Valor has certainly been disrupted by the events of the moon being so greatly disturbed. Apocalyptic scenarios as they are can send the usual markets a bit of a, into a frenzy, but I'm sure that things will settle, and the better understanding that we have, I think the more regulated our response can be. And to most properly respond to this situation in the most optimal way for the greatest number of people. And it's about this time that the front doors of the tavern throw open and some of the movers start making their way back inside. Oh, Tidbit wasn't with us all along. Oh, great to see all of you. Welcome back. Please warm yourselves by the fire. Mirabelle even stands up and offers her seat, but moves round over to the side of Tall and continue the conversation. Sorry, I'm eating cupcake. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you steal that man's cupcake. Granny, I was just, just like, walking, you know, eating a cupcake. <laughs> Such a gnome <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gnomes. Um. Yeah, Grenyard, she's going to walk in after eating some rations from her stash, and she's just going to be like, look, 
day has been long. Fire sounds nice, but I'm I'm just gonna catch some shit I. Um, and she's gonna like kind of slowly make her way up the steps and find a bed to plop down in because she has a level of exhaustion and she knows that Ulara will li- definitely leave without her if she doesn't get her rest. <laughs> All right. And about this time, Ulara and Seneca's watch would be wrapping up. <clears throat> and if there's anything else you guys would like to accomplish throughout the night, speak now. Otherwise, I think we can just fast forward to people waking up tomorrow. Magical sleep, so I'll use that and do my watch. That'll just be how I spend my night. Take two watches. Poland's I'm kind of be taking one right now with Chudley. With Chudley while resting. Yeah, that's cool. That's true. As long as there's no combat that breaks out. Mm-hmm. Poland will stay up late uh, writing, but he really won't do a watch. Just at a certain point, he'll just go to bed. Helm has to manicure his beard before he goes to bed. Other than that, that's all he's got. Uh, Tidbit's writing in her uh, scientific journal about what she saw today. Make sure you put the rock. Put the rock in there. I'm going to put the rock. Don't worry about it. I'm also going to talk about, you know, how some people just don't, you know, See people that are clearly there and are sometimes rude about it. Uh, honestly, Tidbit, this is the most conversation we've had on this entire journey, so I am <laughs> glad that we're having a conversation. I found out that your favorite color was blue, but are you are you color coded color coding your journal? Yes, I do. Thank you. Can 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 I can I be gold? I'll make you silver. You gotta earn. Ooh, I'll take silver. Okay. Draven, who would you like to be on watch with you? (laughs) For whichever watch you end up. Or the last watch. Yeah, I think for, uh, once I get the rest and and no longer uh, fatigued, then I think I would, uh, I would have arranged to be on watch with uh, Blitty. Uh, so at this point in time, everybody who does have a point of exhaustion, feel free to uncheck that from your character sheet as the last watch begins. Can I have taken a long rest or whatever yeah, it is? Yeah. It? So everybody gets a long rest. No combat in the middle of the night. <laughs> he doesn't Unless have Draven's stuff prepped. Well, Blitty. <laughs> All right, cool. No, um, no sneaky, no, so sneaky rest attacks rest. in the middle of the yeah. night, Ryan. <laughs> uh, at this point in the night, is everyone kind of found their way upstairs, or are is t- tidbit Helm and everyone else Seneca? Are you guys all sleeping at on your in your chairs? Uh, I think I'm gonna steal one of these uh, loungers here next to the fire pit. I'll just kick my feet uh. up there. Seneca would have just, like, kicked back in a chair, feet up on the table. Just passed out. (laughs) Helm's got his giant-ass sword right next to him, just in case somebody comes barging in the front door. Because I'll be first one there, Allura. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think she's going to... I was going to say, she's probably going to sleep right next to you. Like, just sitting... No, I want the one closer to the door. She'll let you have the one. <laughs> no, I'm feet, five feet closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get well, to sleep first. Sleeping down here. Liddy's going to kind of like snap out of it when she like, there's some sort of internal clock is telling her, oh, I should get up for, um, for my watch. 
she's taken her rest. She doesn't really need it that much. And she sort of looks around, kind of snaps out of the trance she was in, looks around and sees sleeping people, or I guess sleeping members, I'm presuming. And so she's going to like kind of stand up discreetly and tiptoe out. She's going to be kind of looking around for Draven. She doesn't see him. As you start creeping towards the front door, you start hearing some footsteps coming down the stairs. There's Draven coming for his watch. Draven! Should be tiptoeing? Don't wake the others. I'm not trying to wake the others, but I'm not much for stealth. I know what you mean. Sometimes I just have the worst luck. Um, as they step out the door. Um, how did you sleep? And Draven just starts making his first circuit around the, the building in the town. I slept fine. You spent enough time on a campaign or in the wilds you learn to take sleep where you can get it. I'm very lucky in that way. I don't need much sleep. Um, have you had a chance to think things over a bit? And it seems like you have a plan of what you think we should be doing next. I do. But keep your eyes peeled. Well, I was wondering... Is there anyone else we should be recruiting to the cause? I do believe Yulara and Helm and Tolan are very much on the side of Empire, but what's your read on some of the others? I think that perhaps Tidbit may not be as committed. I also think that Seneca seems open to persuasion. I'd agree with that. What we need to do now is just keep an eye on things. I've let others know. Others who will Help us get this thing away before it makes its way to Empire. Before it becomes just another piece of the machine that oppresses us all. Marv Eve. I agree with that. As we approach the city, that's when it will happen. We approach the city. How, how do you know? How, how, uh... How, how do you know what's, what's going to be there, or who's going to be there in order to help us? I have friends. Friends who understand what Empire truly means. I have contacted them. You don't need to know how. Okay, well, perhaps we'll... Perhaps we'll spill that tea on another day, because you're not going to <laughs> stop me being curious uh, by being so um, so shady about it. Oh, goodness, you've definitely piqued my curiosity. Um, however, if you say that they'll be there, I'll trust you. They'll be there. They've never let me down. Again. My perception is a seven, FYI. <laughs> Are you rolling a perception? I don't know, just in case we need it. <laughs> um, I will say, though, I was talking to Tolan and shared a story of how he was wronged by Empire in a very sensitive situation, one involving love. And I wonder if maybe he's persuadable as well. I do think I might try and talk, talk to him one or two more times just to see he's absolutely on the side of Empire. He'll say things every once in a while, but he also, I think, hears... You know, he hears another argument from his heart and from his head, you know? 
As long as you tell no one that there is anything afoot, just tell them you're concerned, worried about what might become of this weapon. Doing what I'm doing, which is just sort of raising questions and, you know, um, wanting to ask the, the ethical thing, because I feel like no matter what, that's the right thing to do. And so it, as not arouse Mirabelle's suspicion on looking to frame everything as an ethical argument rather than, you know, a, an anti-establishment one. And I, I honestly think it's working. And she did tell me, you know, she, you know, wiped my seat clean and I could walk away if ethically I didn't feel I could go all the way back to Empire and deliver the sword. And that's always an out that we could possibly exercise for any of us who don't want to go all the way to Empire with the sword and perhaps give us a way to give distance between us and, and, and the rest of everyone else. But that's definite, That's something we could perhaps talk to her about if we wanted to, but it's an option. I don't know if we'll need it. Especially if, as you say, your friends are reliable and will be what they say they're going to be. I would greatly advise you not to speak to Mirabel more than you absolutely must. Oh, she thinks I'm suspicious. I'm quite friendly. I, I, I feel like we'd have a chat or two every once in a while. Chat as much as you want. Stay away from her. Those sorts of the servants Where? of the Empire. They are much more devious than you could know. Respectfully, I think avoiding her would be rather obvious. Many people are uncomfortable around the servants that are close to Empire. We've got a good rapport. And I also think I'd rather be closer to her than further away to know if she's starting to get suspicious. I don't know. I, 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 th I feel very confident in this situation. I understand your concern, and I promise I will absolutely exercise, exercise subterfuge and caution. As cautious as you're being right now, I'm afraid well, you're about to wake to... them. Yes, I was afraid we were going to wake them walking out. <sighs> Talk to who you must. Just be prepared. I'll give you the signal. What is time? What is the signal? If you see me, loosen my axe. Without obvious danger, you'll know. So when I see you pull a weapon, I suppose that'd be an obvious sign something's wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. Not when I pull the weapon. When I loosen it. It will be subtle. From what? Like, from where it's attached to your body. Let me see. What, do, what have you got going on, on here? Is this like a strap? Does it go all around, your, all around your torso? And he points out that, like, the axe he has is uh, strapped onto his back. There's a, a leather-bound clasp that holds the axe blade up just behind his head. And to draw it quickly, Genius. he has to untie that. <laughs> Quite a clever way to carry it round. Keeps the hands free. And there is business to be done. All right, so that's the signal then when there's no obvious sign of danger. Hopefully I don't perceive danger where you see none. I have uh, once or twice um, been uh, frightened out of my wits by uh, the, the hoot of an owl that I presume to be an enemy. <laughs> so I'll just be careful about that. <laughs> All right, and so with the perception of 17, did I see or hear anything on our watch? As the late hours creep by a little bit slowly, uh, but just before the sun starts to peak over the horizon, you can't get over this sense that you're just being watched. Whether it's like almost what sounds like whispers coming across on the wind or spotting strange shadows drifting about in your periphery. 
you feel this kind of sense of like just something's out there looking in your direction. Tales of shadowy figures lurking about the wilderness here, creatures that seem to blend into the shadows and disappear without a trace. You know, maybe there's more shadowy cultists out there, and who knows what sort of dark magic they're capable of. You never really feel at ease throughout your whole watch. But then the sun crests the horizon. And you lose that feeling. That sense of something keeping an eye on you. And after the sun rises, nothing else happens of note. As one by one, you can start to hear members of your party rousing from inside. They start preparing their things, throwing bundles together. Breakfast is made. Things are packed. The wagon is readied. And before long, everybody's ready to go. And the party's back on the road. Get intimate with my blade, heretic. All on the road again. I mean, you know, we could stay one more night just to be safe. (laughs) Laura narrows her eyes at you. (laughs) Friend, you're more than safe with me. Don't worry about safety. That bed was awesome. I see why this, you know, uh, clearly doesn't make much money now, but I'm sure at the time it was a hopping place. You're free to come back once we have the sword is delivered. Helm oh, yeah, takes no, his cape. Right on my list. Takes his cape. And makes it makes a bundle on his shoulder. You can sit up there if you want. It's comfortable. Well, um, you know, Grignor, if you are interested, and Mirabelle flips through a couple of pages in her binder and begins scribbling out a few notes across the top of it. If you would be interested in perhaps leading one of the um treks forward to help with the recovery and rebuilding of Willow Creek, I'm sure that that could certainly start earning valor in your favor once your balance has been broken even. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll, um, I'll, I'll think about that for sure. Yeah. yeah that, uh... At the very least, your familiarity with the area and your quick ability to spot something lurking up in the trees or lingering in the shadows would certainly be of use. Keen eyes like that are useful to when, they, when we come across, especially for scouts and the like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I could see where it would be useful. I just, you know, I'm, I'm not really good at, like, rebuilding things, but, you, you know, I, uh... Oh, hey, uh, hold that thought. And she's gonna kind of, like, make her distance away from Mirabelle and kind of make it look like she was, like, inspecting a piece of dirt or something. I, saw, I thought I saw something. <laughs> uh, it's gotta... <laughs> just gonna walk away from Mirabelle. Did this call my name? I think... <laughs> Uh, she takes a few steps behind you, but then decides to give up the chase and closes her pace around Seneca. Uh, so, tell me, dear, um, did you sleep all right? I did, thank you for asking. Did you? Well, truth be told, I was tossing and turning for many of the hours, and I feel I didn't get much sleep, if... and. The little that I did get, I certainly wouldn't say of quality. I feel a bit uneasy about this whole circumstance. You know, I, Silas just seems so incredibly distraught about everything that has happened. I worry that as, as a notary, I feel like my own perspective can be taken as less than objective, if that makes any sense. But it I truly am trying to be objective in this, but I think Silas needs to hear words of encouragement from somebody who is not directly in the employ of the Empire, if that makes any sense. And you would like me to do so? 
Oh, that would be marvelous, if you wouldn't mind, Seneca. Perhaps just a few words of encouragement is all that he can be. I shall see what I can do. The Empire's light be with you. By the way, if, you know, all of this does go well, uh, I could assist in some of the restoration of this poor bridge. You would be interested in returning? Perhaps. Uh, again, if all of this goes well, of course. She excitedly starts jotting out notes across that same page that she had open for Grignor. And you see visibly that she is scribbling your name up on, like, the top of the list. Well, that would be marvelous, Miss Stonebender. I look forward to continuing work with, in the Empire's service with you. Perhaps I would be honored enough to be the notary assigned with the recovery of Willow Creek as well. Perhaps we can continue to work together side by side. Wouldn't that be marvelous? It would indeed, although I figured from such an unpleasant experience, you would not want to return to such a place. Please, feel free to speak your mind. Oh, you, you just seemed rather frightened by all of the... I suppose dark magic that was happening in the area. Most people it, would be turned away from it. Oh, it certainly is... It a bad omen. Troubling seeing such widespread use of something so dark. I could only presume the sort of sacrifices that those people, those blood mages and the like, would have to make use of to call upon such dark magics in order to. As I'm sure you know, as a spellcaster yourself, one familiar with the arcane arts, transmutation of objects is not unusual, Craft, uh, altering the properties inside of one substance and making it become something else. But altering creatures is, well, like a whole science in and of itself. And seeing what this shadowy magic did to that farmer, what it was doing to those cultists, it's already spread further than I would have ever liked in my worst case of scenarios. And seeing it so widely used by so many and how quickly it is having an influence about this area, it is truly concerning for me. Seeing how quick good people are to turn to nefarious acts when exposed to these wicked magics is truly cause for concern, I think. No, out of character, this is a super ironic conversation, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Seneca's just nodding along. She has nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> so the party continues along, and for a few more hours, traversing over these grassy hills, continuing up this dirt path, where for hundreds and hundreds of years, the people of the Empire of Averston have safely traveled these roads. Um, would I be able to do a perception check? Because I am Go easy, ahead and roll me that easy. perception check. I remember yesterday, since we slept, that I, I still had the uneasy feeling that we were not going to be, like, that we weren't alone, that there was still someone watching. Um, it's like a few hours of travel before you start picking up, like, what looks like a trail of wolf poop somewhere nearby. Like, enough that, and recent enough that it's still warm-ish? Recent enough that to cause perhaps concern that there might be wolves nearby in the area and another 30 
to 45 minutes later as you continue uh, downwind from where you believe the wolves to be headed <sighs> before you start hearing a distant howl of some sort of an animal. Uh, if anybody would like to roll me a nature check. Nope. Seneca. Seneca Stonebender. Up ahead, some distance away, you hear a number of wolves, presumably pitched about the same pack, judging from it. Draben, you are familiar with the specific pitches of the dire wolves that accompany some of their tones. There's at least two dire wolves in their number. And Seneca and Draben, there's a third pitched howl that is throwing you <sighs> off. Something harmonious to the other wolves about its pack, but almost more ethereal. Could I do... Ooh, ethereal? Would it be like an arcana thing, or could I roll an animal handling to see if it's a different animal? <laughs> it's a wolf with T-Pain physics on it. <laughs> it's got auto tune. It's got auto tune. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't. Maybe an insight check or animal handling. Sure, sure. Side check. Oh. Uh -huh. You don't. You don't recognize those vibes. Those are new vibes. You could say they're whack vibes. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, as I'm looking around, I see other people notice Everyone. it too, but, uh, be like, I'd keep, uh, Chudley close, because those, uh, those aren't Chudley poops. They're a little bit more wild. If you want to recognize these howls, they're dire wolves. Dire wolves and something else approaching. Be on your guard. Be ready for a fight at a moment's notice. Oh, good. Don't know what I you're will say with your it. 20 nature checks, you guys are also aware that you guys are continuing to be downwind. So as long as that remains in your favor, you have less to worry about. But if the wind shifts or the road turns too sharply, that might change. So long as this pack maintains its positioning ahead of you guys. Precisely what I thought. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take out my maul and just be carrying it. All right. Can I devise some sort of a natural concoction of herbs that sort of like acts like a perfume that makes us smell less human or less like party members? <laughs> Good luck. You can't contain this musk. I just start rubbing dirt on everyone. <laughs> you can start using like some mud to mask the stronger scented among you. No, no, Clay, it only, it only makes it worse. <laughs> it brings out the natural beauty within my skin. <laughs> How would you guys like to continue? In a straight line, Stealthily. right through the forest. Cautiously. <laughs> Survivally. <laughs> okay, well. Don't be cowards, go straight. <laughs> Continuing along, first. this like is kind of, kind of the path. roughly the vibes of the landscape. Every so often on your trek, you've come across the ab abandoned campsite of past travelers. Likewise, you come across another one not too long into your travels. Guys, Grignor is already on top of having checked the ashes. They seem cool, like it's from a fire that has long since been sparked up. Continuing about the wolves, about the woods with wolves on the mind. Uh, if you guys would like to feel free to position yourselves, assuming you are moving northward on this map around Silas and Gus in the wagon. Okay. Don't, don't right click. And we're all fully healed, right? Yes. I think everyone should have taken a long rest. So everything's trying. recharged and back to full, I think. 
someone should be guarding this side of us. I'll be kind of walking along the grass, kind of peeping through the grass and around the trees. Where do you want Chudley? Chudley. I will have Chudley on the other side. Brian, how's, how good is your passive perception? Amanda. Oh, I thought you said Brian. No, I say Grand. Um, my, uh, you don't I choose don't names that sound no. close to Ryan. My, my I did. perception is 16. I did not hear Ryan. <laughs> no, it's fair. Oh my god, that's fair. All right. Uh, so I, you can hear the um, the can on my waistband. So if you hear it Just make an erratic jingling. sound, yeah. <laughs> So that that'll be your signal to come back, as if that can goes real real crazy. <laughs> if it, if it goes crazy, yeah, Gren, yep. she's sticking to the like the the shadow, like the tree line. She's kind of weaving in and out of the shadows, like she's trying to be first to kind of scout it a little bit, but she's she's doing her best to to stay on the in the the shady shady bits. Gren, as you take cover in that next shady bit. That's when that shadow about 120 feet away from you moves. You see it is already in a low arched prowl. It seems to be lined with a number of bone-like protrusions of spines across this large wolf's back. And it is slowly approaching. And you notice the two shadows on either side of it seem to be creeping along and it takes your eyes a few moments to adjust before recognizing those are smaller wolves, full grown wolves, but they look small in comparison to this dire wolf. Oh, good. Oh, good. Um, uh, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got a bird call that no one talked about. So no one probably understands that it's a signal. <laughs> she's going to let what? out a bird call. <laughs> it's super is it a no bird realistic it's like a everybody who hears this bird call feel free to roll me a nature check or insight mm. god damn it anyone but you <laughs> Ulara, that sounds like a troubled whistle. That's a warning signal. Everybody be on your guard. Draven. No, Mish. And Draven, that does not sound like a bird that you are familiar with. And Tolan, you are familiar with all the different pitches that the human voice can make. And that is somebody whistling up ahead, trying to get attention. That's whistling ahead. Someone's trying to get our attention. Can, kind of move up. can he see anything? Does he smell wolves ahead? Uh, roll perception check for Chudley. Are all my staffs are the same. It's weird. Yeah. So roll Silas, down. you protect Gus. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do. I'll stay here. Uh, Miss Mirabelle, if you wouldn't mind sticking too close in case Gus gets hurt, I would very much appreciate he get healed up quickly. Um, certainly, Silas, I can stay here to calm the animal. Laura, you take point. I'll make sure that these two are safe. Chudley is picking up on the scent of more wool. At least uh, like nine different animals. Possibly a tenth. Epic. Hashtags around it. <laughs> I'm just gonna dis I'm gonna climb a tree and good luck. No. <laughs> <laughs> Deuces. Helm starts rattling the can vigorously. <laughs> Bad Gren. Bad Gren. Get out of the tree. Look. Get down, 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 down. right now. Get Let's down. Get moving. Maybe we can find a better, more defensible position. Well, what if I just talk to them? They're wolves, right? What if I just ask them to please leave us alone because we're very dangerous? 
What if they're being attracted by that blade? They're attracted yeah. by my beauty, not the blade. Oh, that's oh, interesting that, that's, questions. <laughs> that's a theory that I think is not supported by the evidence. <laughs> Grenyor, you see what was something. That I couldn't hear you. To pull the shadows from one tree and almost like for the blink of an eye, these shadows form a wall between two trees. And then it seems to pull that shadow with it to the second tree. Like something is using these shadows to get closer. Ah, this is the most defensible position out in the open. <laughs> um. Knowing that, Grenyor, oh no, this is like her worst nightmare is going out into the open. Um, actually, Grenyor is going to climb a tree. Yeah, I want to see if I can get a better vantage point. And if there's a tree anywhere around here in this, like, I don't want to go to the tree that they're next to, but I do want to try and climb so I get above them. All right. Uh, roll me an athletics check to start climbing up this tree. Hey, what about that? It's something to do a flip. Anybody else doing anything to prep? <laughs> <laughs> I've already got my weapon out. I'm gonna cast speak with animals. I have a it has a range of what? It's on Self? myself, but it goes for ten minutes. Oh, for any distance or whatever. I'm gonna Yeah, like, within talking distance. Try and be over here using this tree a little bit as cover, but I'm also going to send, I'm going to speak with animals and I'm going to like talk to the animals that are ahead of us and <sighs> say, um, hello there creatures. Um, uh, normally I'd love to like chat and, and get to know you all, but, um, we're very dangerous and it would be better if you did not attack. Um, may I suggest that there are other options, food options down the road? Um, I don't want to have to hurt you. Let's be friends. Um, and I'm going to try and, like, appeal to their cuddly cub side. Will me an animal handling or persuasion check? I'm going to do... But it's just a straight roll, because you guys smell delicious. Oh, hey, so of course I, I do. <laughs> hey, you still get the plus three, which is not advantage. Let's fucking go. 15's not bad. 15. Um, you speak with animals, so I assume you understand animals? Yeah. Let's go. Change layer. Tokens. Dun, dun, dun. We are not the muscles you are looking oh, for. One of cute. these large wolves with these spine like thorns of bone protruding out from its back. It stands 10 feet tall. This dire wolf emerges from one of the trees a little bit further left than you might have been anticipating them, as it seems this pack has been circling around to start flanking the party. <sighs> and he's coming. A little bit closer. Uh, but it acknowledges you. Says, and you sense it growling back towards you. Everyone else here begins to hear this growling snarl that opens up into a hesitated howl. And those who speak with animals can understand this thing saying that there's a wickedness traveling through these woods. Yeah. It has chased away much of our meals of late. You smell rather tempting. Tolan? What if I left you some victuals of our own behind, and you can have that, and we can be on our way, and we can be on the hunt for the evil thing that is scaring away all your game? Would that be a deal that we could strike? Tell me. 15 was your animal handling or persuasion? I did that as a persuasion roll. As a persuasion roll. Uh huh. So it still counts. <laughs> All right. Everybody else, as you start hearing this wolf growling and snarling and Blitty growling and snarling right back at it, and it takes like half a step back, what's everybody else doing in these six seconds? 
as I'm doing oh, she's doing cool dire stuff wolf, over there. I'm gonna no, have my hand sort of out, down. like palm toward the rest of the party, trying to like hold you guys back, like with a visual sign. I don't know if any of you can see that because I'm kind of trying to like be by the trees and like use them as cover, but like I'm kind of trying to like signal to you guys, like, hold on, wait, this might not. This might be okay. <laughs> this might be very interesting. She could get eaten by a dire wolf because she's trying to communicate with them. Watch closely. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's telling us. She's she's got this, guys. She's gonna handle four velociraptors at once. <laughs> Helm is just gonna sit there. He, he's he he is not feel threatened right now with, uh, with these guys. So. Ulara hey, doesn't guys. do animals. I got a question for you. Since this new version of Roll20 has the ability to put tokens outside of the map layer, could you see if I move tokens to the map, to the see token layer outside of the map? I can see Just the names. names. I see wolf. All right. So if All you don't right. put That's names on the tokens, That's you can foolish. hide as many things as you want over there. Oh. Well, then I guess I can just... <laughs> Excuse me. Impressive. Oh, look, there's an ethereal wolf. Oh, shit. Hmm. But you can so see So Blitty <laughs> is conversing with this dire wolf and talking the pack down. Uh, here's a question. So I know that we used that, um, that thing to create our backstories. I can't remember what it's called. A Life Well uh, Lived by Cubicle yeah, 7. Are we using... Are are we using the quirks that we got from that, or is that just kind of like a flavor? Thing? That was a flavor thing. Ah. What do you have a cool quirk that you like? Uh, My Hero <laughs> Academia just awaken and start doing cool shit. No, uh, her uh, Seneca's is animal affinity. She just feels a connection to animals because she grew up around nature and stuff. Oh, I've been using my quirk this entire time. I'm attractive. I mean, like flavor wise, that absolutely makes sense. Like, I don't think that's, like, a broken mechanic or anything like that. Like, that sounds excellent. So could she, like, tell that the way that the wolves are acting, that they're, like, hungry type thing? Seneca, roll me either an animal handling or an insight check. With a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, they def Like, you can see their rib cage poking out a little bit. Like, things have gotten a little bit scarce in these woods, and this seems to be one of the larger wolf packs about the area. And dire wolves presumably eat a lot more than regular wolves, and knowing there's a couple of dire wolves in this pack could be troublesome. But even more than that sense of hunger that you're getting off of them is fear. Like, they're fleeing from something. Uh, she'll cautiously kind of step a little closer, no further than like Blitty as is close to them. She's mm -hmm. gonna dig out like any dried meat that she can find from her rations and just kind of chuck it over to them. Did you All just right. say you would give them weed? Rations. Oh, I heard weed out of your rations, and I was like, that's, that's a great <laughs> thing to give to yeah, wolves. She's actually, she's actually Get them high. <laughs> and wants to give no, them wait. <laughs> Here's some pot <laughs> brownies. That'll calm wolves. them down real quick. <laughs> hey, you wolves cool or what? Man? Hey, man. Hey, guys, you want to toke it up? <laughs> you could say yeah. you're a token <laughs> creature. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I blew your thunder there, Nick. It's okay, bro. Do I see the food get tossed? Yeah, tosses the food out. The wolf gives a cautious sniff towards it before one of the smaller ones is seem to be encouraged. Bloody, you hear the wolf actively like through this growl that it gets in the back of its throat, command one of the smaller wolves out to fetch that. And it goes up, grabs the trail rations and pulls it back up, just stepping back dragging it ooh, ooh, behind the dire they, wolf. They want, they want flesh. Tidbit. Throw the other half of that person. What? I'm gonna... 
<laughs> I'm going to tell the facts. See, and, and this is this is just, this is something we're willing to give away freely, but there's even more in the wagon that we'd be willing to part with. See you through so that none of you go, go to bed with empty bellies tonight. You see it look over its shoulder at something, like, off that way. Before looking back at you, then move faster. It starts to growl at you again. All right, so we have a deal then. How much and how fast might be the determining factor? So Bliddy's going to turn back to the rest of the group and say, they're willing to trade some food and let us go. Um, I think we're going to have to pony up quite a bit, though. They're very hungry. And to be honest, there's quite a lot of us, and they'd have a feast in place of us. So let's check the wagon. I, I'm sure we... Through provisions from the tavern into the back, is there perhaps an entire hog back there? <laughs> As Bloody turns around to address the party, you guys see these three wolves emerge from the tree line behind her. Just, one of them has this package of in its mod. The other two are just openly growling, like spittle is just dripping off of their maws, and they are looking frighteningly hungry at a lot of you. Why don't back. we just offer them the horse? What horse? We're not gonna, not gonna protect it. Gus! Not it's not my sworn them. duty to Empire! Is it your life no. or Gus? If we offer them Gus, then we, they can take the horse, and we can just it, leave the it, wagon, and we can just go on foot What about the next pack, fine. though? I'm sure there's gonna we be more creatures that want food. make sure he had his stuff, and now it's you're trying time. to get rid of all of his stuff again. You are truly a hero. It not trying to be a hero. If trying to get this sword get the back. Horse, I'm going to kill you. Dibbit, you have got to speak up. Something from the tavern, like a barrel of salt pork or something like that, like that we can just give to them. And then I'm going to turn back to the wolves and I'm going to say, and I'll remind you, I do promise that we might appear small and indefensible, but we are very much going to be a problem for you all. And we would encourage you to take this deal and to treat with us. Bloody, as you're saying this, you hear Silas and if Tolan's willing to assist Tolan, they start producing some of these packs of like dried venison that he had in the burlap. And he starts dragging one of them or two of these meat sacks out and they start rounding about that rock over beside so, Seneca. So small. Give it to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll carry them. Helm is welcome to help himself to anything else he loaded up in the wagon. Get, get While back they're to the doing wagon. that, start moving. Can I try and, and sneak this way a little bit? Oh, God. These buttons this way a little bit more, kind of down the path. Just a wee bit. Make sure we, like, because make sure there's nothing else coming from the other side. Sure. Like, uh, uh, eastern, eastern area. More so than anything. Sure thing. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. God, I just saw and... the, the names to the east. Jesus. <laughs> it's so scary when you just have names there. 21. Mm -hmm. Great. Since I can't climb trees, clearly. I wonder if I can do that. Oh, I can. Uh, Grignor, you start making your way around as the party starts dealing with this hungry pack of wolves. You start scooting your way a little bit further to the north, keeping your eye on this part of the pack that you sense is circling around you and then passing past you, whether they're still circling the party or continue onward. It, you're not sure of just yet. But that's when you start feeling that rumbling about the dirt road that you're stepping on. And you take pause for a moment as you feel something shift in the ground about 30 feet away from you. Something burrowing, something moving incredibly fast in that dirt. You hear, the, for the briefest of moments, what sounds like the grinding of stone ever so faintly somewhere beneath the earth but only for that split second. 
you are aware that it is somewhere in close proximity to you enough that you don't think anyone else in your party heard that sound. I'm going to do my bird call again. Can I get everybody to like roll some initiative? Nice. nice. It's like, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what's happening with those guys, but uh, there's, there's something happening, guys. <laughs> wow. I have a negative one on initiative. How is this even happening? Okay. What's your dex? <laughs> Why can't I roll well on anything is, else? Like is the ground about? we're on stone or dirt? Dirt. Okay. I roll an initiative. I can swap initiatives if somebody doesn't want to go first. Who are we fighting? Uh, we're fighting uh, an, uh, a tremor in the earth. Oh. Like what? We're fighting an earthquake. It's going to be a purple worm. So, first up. If she's back, ready I'm ready. All right. Okay, so I am clearly in the most advantageous space here. I'm in the open. Clearly. I am a small gnome, and I have nothing magical to do. So, <laughs> Renyar is going to, in her very, very gnomish fashion, uh, hearing this weird grumbling of dirt monstrosityness um, in her close vicinity, she's going to double down. She's going to take a really, really, you know, like solid stance, kind of dig her heels into the ground, and she's going to pull out both of her psionic daggers, and she's just going to, like, bare her teeth ready for whatever it is that's coming her way, realizing that she no longer has the shade of a tree, but she's mm -hmm. not about to <laughs> turn her back to whatever is about to come towards her, so she's going to hold her action until she can See something other than the wolves that we've uh, befriended? I, right. I did the bird call. I did the bird call, and that is the extent. I didn't yell anything because I also don't know what I saw. I, I just, I just know that there's something coming. So all right, there's just, just, just a bird call. Uh, Silas is going to use his turn to keep on dragging this heavy sack out to the wolves. Where he'll drop it there, start making his way back. Um, uh, Grignor. It's about that time, that rustling in the bushes that you hear of those wolves that are starting to circle around and flank the party. Something shoots out with a great force from the ground, and for but a split second, you can only see something leap up into the air before you hear it smash through some of the treetops nearby. And an impained howl of several of the wolves as it plunges into them. Uh, can I have Grignor roll me 6d6 plus 8 damage, please? He's kind of cute. No, that's what I was just thinking. Um, does like... that set off my attacks? You said plus 8? Uh, yes, plus eight. If you'd like to take a shot at it while it's in midair, absolutely. Absolutely, I would love to. Twenty-five. Oh, that's going to make my life a little bit easier for those wolves. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh it said it, it went from wolves to question marks. <laughs> 25 is going to hit for... I think it's just 5 because I wouldn't... Five. Would I just sneak attack? I don't know. Were you cool hit last did. round? I don't think so. The wolves were my allies smashes now, smashes into though. that nearby flank of wolves. <laughs> the wolves are my allies. And you don't hear those wolves sneaking up anymore, but you do hear that crunching of granite, of the stone moving underfoot. And... Oh, that's That's bad. That's bad. That's going to be its turn. Blitty. So, question, because I don't know if it works this way or not. My yeah. uh, my psychic blades, when I attack with them, they get the additional one. Since I was holding my action, do I get both of them, or do I only get one? 
I'll say sure. Fire it off. <laughs> as many as you allow. <laughs> You guys fired, will need to do damage to this. Then you fired, then you missed. That second dagger arcs well, upward really, but really seems freaks to me smash out. across the surface of it, not sticking into its fleshy bits. And with that, Lady is up. Can I see what Granuar is fighting? She, you saw her throw a uh, dagger at something, and you heard the wolves from somewhere behind you whimper out in pain, and something smashed into the trees. For all you know, I'm attacking the wolves. Oh, God, that's a really bad look for me. (laughs) (laughs) I throw a dagger, the wolves howl and and whine. Perfect. Is it uh, an action for me to keep using my speak with animals? No. I think now that you've cast the spell, you can just speak freely. So I'm going to ask them, what's going on? Is that that the evil? Where is it? Tell me where to go. You hear that snarl again as it ta- as all of the hairs and those bone spines on its back start to stand up on end. The wolf drops the rations that you guys had dragged out for it, and the three of them that you can see take a deep stance as they start backing up. They say, "It's here." Well, but but where? Where do I go? Where where do you where is it? Where is it coming from? You see, it's. Focus is no longer on you, but in the direction that that sound came from. Okay. Over there. All right. I'm going to go to where... Oh, gosh. How... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. I need my, I need my measuring <laughs> stick. Okay. While you're clicking and dragging, you can right-click, and that'll do the measuring stick on your token. No, wait. Right-clicking's okay. bad. What? My right-clicking yeah. shoots me off the map every time. Mine works. Okay. <laughs> I want to go to that square. I'm going to put my finger on it. How far? 30 feet? 35 feet? 35 feet. That square? That square. And I'm going to see what I see. Would you like to do action check? Or hold it for something else? I am going to hold, yeah, my action until I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hold, um, my, I'm, as soon as I see the creature, I'm going to mold earth where it is and, and try and keep it from moving. All right. Toll it. Oh, that's, that's not good. Um, <laughs> uh, so, all right, if it was okay, I wouldn't toll in to be sitting in the cart. Just like absolutely okay. Um, Tolan is um, going to cast uh, invisibility. Let me see here. It is uh, a touch. I'm I'm just gonna like reach out and like pat the back of Gus this rump and just be like, oh boy, let's make you invisible. Nothing can see you then. And then I'm gonna make the horse invisible. Such a dumb thing to do. I love it. Since the wagon's attached to the horse, oh, does you. it go invisible too? Because all I'm going to say yes. Are invisible I'm going to say yes. <laughs> As Tolan, Tolan appears to be just levitating where he's sat on the wagon, but Gus and the wagon go invisible. You might have seen the house fly. Along as Tolan's got Maybe even a super fly, but you've never <laughs> seen a donkey fly. <laughs> <laughs> So Silas just sitting on nothing. He ain't even there. Uh, His shit disappeared. (laughs) Tolan's on the wagon, so it looks like he's sitting on nothing. And uh, Silas is out here dragging rations from the wagon to try and pay the wolves' tax. I told him to stay with the wagon, but no, he had to be a buff man, take it himself. Well, he's brought more rations out than you, Helm. So that's one in his on his scoreboard. I blame the gnome. Uh, Tolan is uh, mm. just going to stay in the cart. Um, he can see out now, though, at least. <laughs> oh, it's a covered wagon. Would he not be invisible under the cover of the wagon? I don't know on this one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I, it'll did it. come under consideration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, feel free to take the invisible condition. Currently, when the when the okay. land shark comes, we'll adapt I think that. It's a condition now. <laughs> Draven Steelguard. All right, so the wolves haven't done anything aggressive yet. We just heard the noises coming look, from over here. 
yeah, the wolves no longer look aggressive towards the party, but their focus has been drawn to what's attacking over there. All right. Draven's just going to sort of position himself about there. And uh, I'm going to say he's going to ready an action to cast a ray of frost. Yeah. If an enemy comes within range. <clears throat> All right. Mm -hmm. At the end of your turn, this is going to take a legendary action to burrow its way forward and claw itself up out from the dirt. As everybody about this area sees the ground open up into this empty stony maw that starts to take large whiffs of the air through the mouth with each those with held actions, feel free to take attacks. Okay. I'm gonna mold Earth. I try and keep it or rooted to the spot. It says, if you target Lucy, you can instantly excavate it, move along the ground, or deposit it. A 10 okay. is going to just smash across the front of its chest and going to miss. I'm going to mold Earth for this effect. Hopefully. Evie, if I'm gonna Which be square? honest... <laughs> the dude just traveled through the earth. I don't know if Mold Earth is going to work on him. Or it could be the only thing. It, it could fire be. With it, fire, I, no, I'll friend. shut up. I'll shut up. That's fair. Draw it onto the map. Oh, uh, the square? Yeah. Okay. A paintbrush. Okay. Go rectangle. Uh, re huh, 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 huh. Rectangle. Oh, you're kicking <laughs> with my light. Right. Okay. Rectangle. Uh, this, I guess, this square? Is it standing on that square? It's, you want it on the square it's standing on? Like a fo one of its feet. It like seems right there? huge. Yeah, perfect. Okay. As the ground opens up beneath it, dropping this thing prone, it smashes its open maw into the ground, throwing it off balance for a moment. His one hand is bigger than me. <laughs> His finger is bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm not even Any an exerciser. Wasn't there one other hell action? Did it already go off? I think Mine so. already went off. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, Seneca. <clears throat> okay. Um, since Silas is right next to her, uh, I can cast Mage Armor at will. So she's going to touch him on the shoulder and cast Mage Armor. So oh, he hell yeah. So he gets an AC of 13 plus his dexterity modifier. Oh, heck yes. It's an NPC with zero dex modifier, but his four hit points are all the more grateful for that, certainly. I'm sure his AC was worse than 13 before. <laughs> it was terrible before. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, oh no. Uh, I what does it you. look like? As Seneca's mage armor shields this guy up. What kind of magic is going on here? Uh she she touches his shoulder and like from her fingertips, the color of like I don't know if actually anybody has any of this party has been deep into the ocean, but it's that same kind of deep blue color as like when you're far down into the ocean every now and then you seek like a glint of light and then it fades into darkness and it just kind of envelops him and then kind of fades away. <laughs> it's like the color of my eyes. <laughs> uh, and that's it. I think she's going to stay put there. Dire wolves are going to... Oh, right. She'll motion at the dire wolves to, as in to like, or, or she'll say to the dire wolves, she'll say, it, uh, I don't know if they understand common. Uh, she'll say it in Elvish because her perception is that animals could speak maybe Sylvan and that's close enough. So she'll <laughs> say in Elvish, if you, if, if you are too afraid to fight, please run. We do not want you to be hurt. 
You see them, the big one snatches up that pack of rations on the floor and they take off into the woods. <laughs> Tolan, you start moving yourself back a little bit. You start drifting mule length of movement backwards. <laughs> As he continues backing up from the loud sounds of this monstrous nightmare emerging, and everyone starts hearing the heeing and hawing of an invisible donkey backing up. Can I uh, try to reassure him? Absolutely. Uh, he start giving him scritches. Yeah, just it, it's okay. Um, I know I can cast speak with animals. I don't know if I could have done that before all this went down. If you were, like, casting that while inside of the wagon to understand what the wolves were saying, we could say yeah. that happened. What do you want to tell Gus? Um, don't worry. You're invisible. He can't see you. And we're going to take <laughs> care of him. Here, it, much like a donkey's hee-hawing, it's just, like, he is very much, like, having a panic attack right now. He's invisible. He doesn't know what happened to him. This monster just emerged from the ground, and it's getting closer, and you are just soothing the donkey a little bit. Tidbit! <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here. I got Earth Tremor. This thing is underground. All right. Oh, no, this thing is no longer under the ground, right? <laughs> It's it's oh it's it's been knocked prone onto the ground. Let me see, just gotta make sure. I thought I had er okay. So this is ten feet. And it is clearly not 10 feet away from me. Wow. Um, hmm. I guess I'll cast Entangle on it. <laughs> Gotta stop it from moving. That's a strength save from it? Oh, uh, yeah. Right. That's a 14 on its save. Ooh, ooh, it might. Meets it, beats it. These vines start rooting up around it, wrapping around itself. Oh, but just before it can start to pin it, it starts biting and snapping right through all of them, breaking free of the entanglement. And I cannot... I can't do anything else. Like, I can't cast a cantrip because they already used a, a spell. The, the effect is still present on the area, though, right? It still leaves the area difficult terrain. Uh, let me see. To do to each creature succeeds a restrained creature, it frees itself, no longer restrained. Yes. Uh, 20 All right. foot square. Then feel free to draw that out onto the map. Is that a 20 foot square? No. No, that, that's bigger. Four square wide. Four square one. That should be it. Yeah, it looks right. If it's a ten foot from the center to the side, then it's twenty feet total. Okay. Yeah. Cool beans. All right. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no. I. I. <laughs> the the meal is no longer there. And who is my emotional support mule? Um, because the people in my party are just mean and they don't listen to me, so I suppose I'll end my turn. <laughs> All right. Mirabelle is going to take a few steps towards the closer party members, and she is going to. Let's see if this works. Uh, 
Um, how about Oh, oh, that's fun. oh, that's oh what was that? All sorts oh, of radiant that. light oh, showering oh. down and just berating the space where this monster is at as this holy light shines oh, down. I see how you do that. How many, how many? <laughs> uh, I believe it's a little wand. Yeah, effects. Lucas, yes. Can I yes. have you roll me? 8d6 for me. I would love to roll you 8d6 right now. As a flame strike is dropped down on this monster. Oh, I'm going to abuse that. How about 30? <laughs> 30 is great. I actually rolled really well on those d6s, y'all. Put me in on Warhammer. I'd be good. <laughs> Crits on, no, then hits I'd on fight threes. You. I don't want to fight that. Three pluses. And she starts... Shouting out all sorts of prayers about the Empire's light purging this darkness from these lands. As a cloud opens up and the heavenly light just radiates all sorts of barrages down on this nightmare. Next Hel up, Ulara. Helm from the back. You're blinded by the light, bitch. Ha <laughs> ha. Okie dokie. Ah. Uh... All right, uh, Ulara is going to. Did you by chance like identify that sword overnight by chance? By chance. Well, it's what's in her hand, so it's what she's going to use. My health. By chance, I, I by just, chance. I just want to know what the stats are because it looked so cool. So, I, I kind of want to make my rolls to Ryan. <laughs> um, how do I hold on? I gotta switch my settings really quick. <laughs> oh, DM whispers. Oh, so we can't see That's if you exactly fail. Him. You're colluding because he's he's, he's too, too afraid, afraid if we go against, against him, him, we know we'll have a chance. That's why he's fighting. All right, I believe I have to make the save for this spell, right? I think so. Oh, yeah, it's a strength roots. Like strength, strength save the first time you enter it, or. Yeah. No. Nah, uh, is it when it's cast or when you enter it? I don't know. You're good either way. I got a 14, so I meets it, beats it. Just me. Uh, and then uh, Ulara is going to swing the Moonlight Greatsword at this thing. I think that hits. Oh, that definitely hits. Does anything happen to the sword when she strikes with it? Oh, oh, that's a great question. No. Uh, and then I'd like to use uh, my bonus action to uh, use my War Priest bonus attack and swing again. All right. I think that hits. hits. <laughs> damn, all right. Lara starts uh, dishing out some damage. And that's the end of Lara's turn. As this Moonlight Greatsword cleaves across, just ripping a chunk of this thing's arm off of its body, it collapses off into the ground and much like the farmer before, just shatters into a pile of obsidian-like glass before you. It lets out a groan of agony as this impossibly wide maw opens up again, sending out like a like a shark's mouth, just rows upon rows of teeth. More of them start to emerge, pushing more layers onto the exterior as it screams out in pain. As the blade seems to pull in some of this shadowy ichor from the wound of this monster and this black crystal-like substance starts to almost crack into the blade. Anything else you would like to do? Uh, that's it. That's all the uh, all the things. As there is a discordant howl coming from the north, as stepping through a brief chill into the wind, 
emerges a larger figure adorned by a couple more wolves that emerge see this nightmare of veins thing that just had its massive arm chopped off as it seems to grow more teeth and it is going to turn back around and chase after the other wolves exiting from this combat tell the beautiful all right all right uh Helm is uh, going to, uh, let's see. Can I make a perception check to see if I can see Tolan inside the wagon now that it's moved? I think it's an action to perception check something that's invisible. If you want to use your action to perception check Tolan. Yeah, otherwise Silas isn't going to be able to find his cart. I'll do it. Sure. I'll do it. No. Nope. Don't see shit. They're gone. Fucking gnomes. Anything else you would like to do? Fucking gnomes. Uh, <laughs> he stole the wagon when nobody was looking, of course. Your Tolan would do that. Uh, yeah, he'll move up in front of Mirabelle. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he will call out to Gren. Gren, get back. Get away from that creature. <laughs> uh, and that's all that I Helm can do. I don't want to be next to it. <laughs> well, Gren is up next. As this map... <laughs> actually, sorry. It's going to take a legendary action no, at it, the it end of Helm's turn. To. It's quite all right. And... Hmm. Let's see. Lara's the only one close enough currently... That's so it's fair. going to try and take a bite at Ulara. Or my AC is twenty. Its massive jaws clamp onto you, but it just doesn't have the force behind the bite left in it to punch through this armor. The faith of my my faith in Empire protects me. Ulara begins to glow a little bit. Helm just ended his turn. Grignor. That sword's cursed. Um, <laughs> Renor is going to heed Helm's words and she's going to step back. Oh my god, see, do you see? Do you see? Don't see. <laughs> I, I was, it flipped me to the whole part of the map. Um, I'm gonna step back <laughs> here and I'm gonna attack him. With the blades. 23. And now I have an ally, as unfortunate as it is, within five feet. <laughs> for 14. <laughs> 23 hits for 14 damage. And I get a second attack for 25. <laughs> and so that'll be a total of nine on that one. Nine on that one. Hey, Gren, what does it look like? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so she's going to uh, she's gonna look over to Helm and uh, kind of nod at him, and she's gonna pull out these two daggers once again, and she's gonna throw one as it hits him somewhere in his massive body. He's gonna look at her, and she's gonna throw the second one, and it's gonna hit him right in between the eyes. <laughs> and it just sputters to a stop as this black ooze just flows freely from its mouth like an open vein of oil. It just starts to pour out this gross black ichor spilling out of its open mouth. Splashing onto the ground around it. It's like some Princess Mononoke shit. And Gren's going to take a, a sigh of relief, but she's still going to look around her because she doesn't trust anything anymore, and every time something else pops up. So she's she's going to use the rest of her turn to look around, even though she's any more action. He's ready for the next thing to come out. Right, well, because this place be haunted. <laughs> with that, we're out of combat. Did, um... Ulara's going to look over at Grenyor and go, nice shot! 
Did um the Delara use the sword? Yes, she swung it twice. What does uh what does this aura look like after she did that? Or her aura, I guess. Or both. So slicing the blade into the creature, it drew some of that black ichor into the blade, and the kind of pristine glass surface of the blade now looks like it has a series of cracks in it, like a broken ice, like a not quite yet broken ice cube. It has imperfections throughout and those cracks throughout the blade are that same black ichory color that are spilling out from this thing's open mouth. Can I insight check the blackness or the sword to see how it feels? If you'd like to describe how you're inside checking it. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be standing kind of close by. I'm not going to get super close to you, Lara. And I'm just going to say, um, and I'm going to like be looking at it and I'm going to be kind of critical and I'm going to be looking back and forth between the two. And I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to like kind of ask, I'm like, so, um, Laura, how does the sword feel? How do you feel? And, and um, 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 Mr. Sword, if you have any thoughts to impart, uh, I'm, I'm willing to listen. I can hear the elements of where you came from in the earth. I know, or with, in space, I should say, I know that you are made of star stuff, and so are we, and so is this earth, and I can hear, can hear the natural timbre of your voice. Tell me, how... How has this affected you? Are you talking to my... to, to the sword? Roll me an insight check, Blitty. I'm talking to both of you. Do you not think like, you can speak to the oh, Earth? God, did Nick get another talking sword? I think of it sort of like um, like her people worship the mountains and the trees <clears throat> and rocks and stones and that sort of thing. So it's kind of like how um, the known ring of power can rings of power can like sing to the mountains. Like it's very very similar kind of vibes because like the stone inside seems to have changed its material properties since making contact with that monster. And much like the leaves of the elven tree, there seems to be a bit, little bit of like just that bright light isn't as bright anymore that's shining from inside of it. It seems as if whatever combat it's just been through, has darkened its qualities. It seems... It seems changed. Its material properties have changed. It's no longer the same. Whatever this weapon was when we found it, it's no longer that thing. It's something else. Somewhere behind you, you hear Mirabelle calling out, Is everyone all right? Does anyone need any healing? I think we're all good. Let's get moving. Uh, can Tidbit take Gus some of ran the off too? Hey, Tidbit, don't drink this black liquid, okay? Can uh, she's not going to drink it? Tidbit is um, going to uh, put her tongue back in her mouth. Uh, she was going to lick it, uh, but she's going to <laughs> she's going to collect more of that dark ichor. We should, yeah, that's a good idea. We should take another sample. Uh, Ulara is going to look around when they point out that Gus is missing, and she's going to say, "Where's Tolan?" I think I'm with going it. to drop concentration. Oh, there you are. Hello, all. 
And there's the horse. Great. Let's get moving. Uh, Ulara's gonna step past Blitty, and then she's gonna say to her, whether or not it's changed, it's still gotta go where it's gotta go. Well, all right, but, um, what do you think of, of, of what's going on with the sword? Ulara's gonna, like, take her hand and just, like, run it along the, the blade. Does the ichor still, like, run from her? Like, you can clean the blade off, like, wiping the ichor free from the blade, but it's like the mint surface of it has cracks throughout the blade that are infused with some of that same energy. And upon taking hold of the blade, you feel like your de devotion is continuing to maintain this blade through at its core. It seems very absorbent of the properties that it is exposed to. Seems as long as I maintain my faith in Empire, I should be able to maintain the blade. I mean, what, have, have you? I mean, is it not changed? It may have dimmed, um, but it hasn't gone out. Well, that's true. I worry about the fact that it's so capable of picking up any and everything around it. I think we can all admire Empire's ability to be all-knowing and all-good. But what if those qualities were absorbed by something that was at its core already corrupted? What then? It's not for me to make that judgment. It's for me well, to deliver this back. I'm, it is if I'm asking you. Do You do have opinions and thoughts, do you not? I have faith in Empire, and this is what I was asked to do. So that's your one thought, then? Faith in Empire? I don't understand why you seem to think that somebody who is a war cleric of Empire would have doubt about the mission that they were sent on. Questioning yes, I have faith in Empire, and that faith sustains me through this mission. I don't see why you don't seem committed to protecting Empire. It seems to me like you want to deliver a bomb on his doorstep simply because he ordered it without knowing what it was. Empire does not need me to protect him. Well, I do believe that every safeguarder of any religion or culture has a responsibility to protect it. Isn't that what we do? Isn't that the whole point? To protect I'm, your faith and your I'm saying that your, Empire your doesn't need my protection. He knows better than I. Well, in that case, I'm, I'm glad that your faith comforts you. This terrifies me, and I think it would terrify Empire, frankly, if he actually saw it and knew what it was. And I think we'll get a chance to see his reaction when he realizes what a dark entity we've brought into his midst when we get there. When we get there. Have you ever wondered if your admirable leader will actually thank you for this, do you not worry that he won't question why your faith didn't tell you this was the wrong path? If a believer doesn't see the signs put in his path, isn't he ignoring the very materialism of his faith. I think we're doing the right thing by bringing it back. The manifestation of faith, that's what I meant to say. All right, well, I'm so glad that uh, we could come to that agreement. 
if anyone could protect us from whatever corruption or power might weigh within this blade, Empire is the person or to do that. Question then as well. Um, are you the best person to be wielding it then? You've already tainted it by your actions, have you not? The blade is fine, and we will return home. And she's going to continue exactly on up the I path. That's not exactly what I asked, though, is it? Let's move this caravan along. We spent too much time here. Soon we were walking and talking. Yeah, everybody kind of like, after gathering oh. their collection samples, surveying the area. Get well, then again. let's move along. I will once again walk ahead of the party and keep my guard incredibly even more high now. There's some even more weird shit happening, you know, teleporting wolves, round monsters. And before long, you guys find yourselves closing in on the outskirts of the familiar cityscape line of Aberston, just across the way. The sun is starting to set in the distant horizon, close enough that you guys will make it there probably by sunset, if a little bit sooner. Uh... There's the plethora of buildings. Of people are becoming a more and more common sight along your travels. Hello. Oh, hello. hello. Hi. Hi. I, I, I've been wondering why. I've been asking to do something. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Ryan. We just weren't ignoring you, Tidbit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's fair. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry, Ryan, but could Tidbit have done something back when we were walking? Sure, sure. What you thinking? Uh, could Tidbit have like found a seed of some sort and uh, poured some of the ichor on it to see what the seed does? Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. All right. Tidbit, tidbit, tidbit. I mean, maybe around the time that you were well, describing the back of the wagon. wagon. Either a nature <laughs> or a medicine check. A nature check. Even though I'm not professional, that's an eleven. An eleven. You're uh, not proficient, you... and you got an and you got a plus seven. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. Wait, no, you'd have to be proficient because otherwise you'd have to have like a twenty-four. Are you a druid with intellect. five intelligence? No, sixteen. Did you take like, expertise yeah. in intelligence? No. How are you not yeah, that's proficient? not possible. I, you so have to have you have to be proficient with it. I well, really we found out she's cheating. Don't know. <laughs> I followed what D and D Beyond did, and I didn't mess with anything. I swear to God. Okay, then you're perfect. I trust you wholeheartedly. Thank so, you. So, with an eleven, <laughs> you pour some of this shadowy ichor across this seed, and. Observe it for a few moments. It seems as though the seed absorbs this viscous fluid, and as it flows over it, what emerges is devoid of color. Oh, cool. There's, it's almost like a filter has been put just across the seed. And you watch as these black hairs start to push out from the surface. And they continue putting out ever sharper and sharper, like thorns on a cactus. Oh, cool. Just going to put that right back in its flask. <laughs> As you start pouring that back into its flask, you hear the cracking sound of the seed starting to split. Uh, uh, <laughs> is the seed in the flask? <laughs> oh, no. You tell me. Yes, it is. It's in the flask. She closed it. Yes. Oh, God. 
<laughs> so you've she's got kind of ace, pan- you've a flask. She's uh, she's kind of panicking right now. <laughs> is it continuing to grow or is, did it stop? It's in a flask. Um, no. Now you have a monster Every in so a often, flask. Yeah. You feel like the slightest thump of something moving from the inside, but it's like slow, more like a soft brush of the side of it than like a thump. All right. Well, that's a problem for another day. Sure. I don't like how you said sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ryan, As the party seed. closes in on the nearby town. Are we in the city of Aberston? Or uh, you're there? like outside of the city walls where like some of the old kind of ramshackle shacks have grown into long-standing establishments. It has become a bit of a of its own outside of the walls and this is where you guys find yourselves uh you can just start to make out the hustle and bustle of the familiar sights of the city recognizing some of the familiar warm colors of the tapestries proudly on display in all of empire's light and you can just start to make out that tower standing proudly in the middle of the city where your destination lies and you know it's but a couple more hours till the completion of your journey, should you continue along this trodden path, when uh, the audible sounds of music emanating from a nearby market seems to call your attention in the direction of the nearest entrance of the city gate. By continuing along this road, you will pass through this market square where there are a number of items available for you guys to pick up anything that you are needing or the like. Uh, Lara's going to take her cloak off and wrap it around the sword and keep carrying it. All right. Uh, With the sword concealed, as you guys are continuing through, those on the lookout start to feel familiar glimpses and like, People in the distance are pointing, and you can start to occasionally hear cheers and applause as some people are starting to recognize you guys passing this way and that. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like being. Hmm. How do they? Why? Rainier's going to look back to Mirabelle. Well, it seems as though word is already gotten out about your endeavors on behalf of Empire. Cool. One could, it put the flask yeah. down. <laughs> I could I certainly just... assure you that I believe everyone has been displayed in a most favorable light thus far. As she nods and just kind of like happily, joyfully squeezes at her journal. Oh, that as wonderful as it is to be recognized for um you know uh, our work for empire could it could it not also be dangerous would someone not be motivated to share our location um with 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 anyone really should we maybe pass through quite quickly or is this some place we want to linger we'd like we can throw hoods up and continue to make ourselves scarce before too much recognition is shed do you think that ship has sailed so to speak well, I, I see no... Some of these uh, streets. Personally, not I'm not ashamed to walk proudly in the light of the Empire. I'm certain that we are safe here, and we are just outside of the city's walls. Oh, Mirabel, I think only of completing the task. I simply just don't want word getting out to the wrong parties, you understand. And Who do you Drubbin think? turns around and looks at the group. I recognize some of the folk here. We don't want to be seen with them. Come, I know these streets. This way. And he takes the uh, a turning to the left. That takes us off the main street we're on. Is is that? Does that still lead to the gate to go into the city? We go straight. Come on. Kind of like a alternate route, but yes, in the same direction. 
I we think Ulara would take Empire. the shortest distance Straight to that gate. to the Empire. Come on. No, no, you know, Ulara, it just makes perfect sense. You know, we have someone who knows this area of town saying we don't want to go that way. But no, keep stomping ahead. That's what you're good at. Ooh. Sure is. Right. Let's fucking go. It's not like, it's not like we're doing this together or anything. I forgot it's a one-man show. Helm you did it all on is your own. pushing people out of the way so that way Ulara can move at a decent pace. We're going through the crowd. Uh, there's not so much a crowd like uh, around you guys. Variable throng of people. people are, are, like there are occasional people, and sometimes one or two of those faces might be whispering, confused with a point at the party. But it's not like everybody's throwing a celebration for you guys' return or anything like that. Oh uh, yeah, Let, let's take main streets straight to the capital. We gotta yeah. get this task okay. done, right, Olura? For certainly. Uh, I'll lockstep with the Laura and start marching. Summer. I, for drama's sake, I think that's going to have to be an allowed thing. Okay, I can do that. But, but yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so I I would like to do something real quick then. I have this fun thing Absolutely. called Awakened Mind, and I can telepathically communicate with one person that is 30 feet away from me uh, for up to three minutes, and then after I use this thing, uh, they can be within a mile from me, and I can still communicate with them, and I'd like to use that on Blitty. Ooh. And she's yes, going it. to tap telepathically say to Blitty, <laughs> Okay, you should not outwardly react because other people will find it suspicious. But if you have a plan to make sure that this sword does not get to Empire, I suggest you do it now or I will take things into my own hands. No. Um, uh, Draven has loosened his axe and he's gone here to the left and I, I do believe we should... Uh, follow, he, that was the signal for something to happen. He has people here to help. Um, but we, we need to follow. I feel like we can't let you, Laura, get too far ahead. And I almost feel like we should be flanking, but I'm not really sure. And so I'm just going to follow Draven, I think, if you want to come with us. Here to the left. And be ready. If you have any actions or anything that you can prepare, that would be probably ideal. I know I'm going to mold Earth as soon as I can um, on, on, on the most ideal target as soon as uh, I get the signal from two uh, that something's going to happen. As everybody's continuing forward along the same path, uh, you come across a sort of... It's like a... There's a well present in the middle of this sort of square cul-de-sac kind of a thing where there's a gathering of houses and farms circling up around this well that seems to be a central focal point. As Draben starts to drift a little bit further to the left than the intended path that it seems Ulara and Helm are taking along the main road to the right and there's a busker's music evident coming from somewhere nearby echoing across some of the buildings the occasional chatter just on the other side of other buildings as other people are continuing about their day in the, every casual sense. Like, the, it's a normal cityscape here. Um, I don't know if it was said, because I know the party's kind of splitting right now. I would have followed Ulara and Helm, because at the end of the day, I want to make sure I get to Emperor and get my, my stuff marked off or whatever. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm sticking with Mirabelle and them. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> chose the draw. winning side, of I Amanda. hate Ulara. I hate Ulara so much. <laughs> <laughs> I am not here for her. I'm just like, God damn this bitch. She just doesn't fucking listen you to anyone. You hear that <laughs> can just ringing out in the daytime. 
Dude, like, like, Brenda yeah. is just bitching this whole time. Like, no, let's just follow this this bimbo up here because she can't take her hands off this fucking sword. And she knows everything. I forgot she did this. Like, this, she's just nonstop talking shit about <laughs> Ulara so as they're walking. <laughs> this is the best. If you see a reason to, you know, do your own thing, maybe go for it. Um, you know, I feel like everyone should have known that Mirabel was ready to wipe my slate clean and I didn't even have to go back at all and that more of us should have been able to get that deal. Like, that should have been a broadly distributed option. <laughs> uh, Brandon, Helm, Brandon doesn't like to talk to Mirabel. Helm didn't want the deal. Helm wants to stay in service to Empire. Well, great. Good for you, Helm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make you not in service. It just it just clears your name so you don't... He doesn't want to be... He doesn't want his name clear. He wants a purpose. And that's what his purpose a is. A lone in individual stands in the middle of the forked path in front of Ulara, just a little bit ahead of you guys. Uh, he seems to be standing there, leaning up against the signpost that clearly points out the direction towards the city gate right behind him. He's smoking a pipe adorned in a number of animal skins. And his attention draws upwards upon seeing this group approaching. Greetings, friends. I don't suppose you have much time for the game of chance. I do not. Move out the way. Bitch. Whoa. <laughs> you know, like, you well, can't just call people that. I know you are one, but, like, you can't just go around calling. I'm sorry. She she really is full of herself, and she thinks she's the only one that exists <laughs> in this world. Laura, feel free to roll me an intimidation and or persuasion check. Can I aid <laughs> by just being a giant ass giant? Next to Alora, no. and just <laughs> and, and be like, <laughs> Mirabel, I hope that you wrote that down. And so, whenever this happens, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> he seems a little bit like thrown back by that for a half a second, and like he it throws him off that he doesn't really know what to say as you guys continue approaching towards him. Uh, she doesn't and engage guys, with him further. It, she just is going to move past the man. All right. Uh, you're continuing to approach this man up the street, and you can hear that the music of a busker getting a little bit closer as you guys are continuing. He doesn't seem to be too far off from this guy. And I can just bloom beyond to here. Can I make a reference? Arcana check on the music? Sure thing. Anything in particular you're looking for? If it's magical music or just Merriment playing. Listen out for a bard, I guess. I don't know if that's... I mean, you recognize the song he's playing? It doesn't flow with any arcane intent, but it doesn't mean a caster capable of casting musical spells wouldn't be able to use such an instrument as their own arcane focus. Okay. I'm also sitting in the cart. <laughs> Bye, you are. <laughs> How close are we to the cap to like the city walls? Like just a few hundred feet out. Oh, we dare. Okay. Um, Seneca. Uh, <laughs> so I am able to. Oh, wait. Yes. Okay. So this is an illusion spell. So I am able to cast it without a verbal or somatic component. I'd like to forego the verbal. She is going to cast Phantasmal Force. <laughs> And she's going to put that fun little 10-foot cube right where Helm and Alara are. All right. If you want to draw that out. Paintbrush. Rectangle. What is it? 10 feet. Oh. 
Is that a two by two? Is that yeah. right? I think so. Right there. Is Allura a human or elf? She's a high elf. Damn. Of course. <laughs> uh, so I, let's see. <laughs> okay. I Did need them to make me an intelligent saving throw, please. <laughs> Uh, so you don't Helm, cast it for you guys so you can read it. Helm, you have uh, advantage on this save. Why do I have advantage on this save? Because you do. Cool. Twelve. I think that means we both succeed. So do you not have to make a save? Oh, I did. His, I whispered his it to are Ryan. private to Ryan at the moment. Wow. <laughs> because of the sword. Oh, let me read this real quick. <laughs> what the fuck was this that you just shot at us? Phantasmal uh, Force. Phantasmal Force. It's an I recognize style. that voice anywhere, Laura. <laughs> uh, actually, I took out the verbal component. Because I can't. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> it's called. Um, what's it called? It's called. Um, wait, wait, wait. didn't you go left? <laughs> no, I stuck with the party. I'm messing with you. <laughs> Slightly left. Draven's Slightly right there. Left. <laughs> I don't think they take any. Tidbit went left, but no one asked or or saw. D Tidbit is a rogue agent. I don't know where Tidbit stands on the scales. Because <laughs> no I... one asks her. <laughs> no one asked. My list is pro empire, so I'm like freaking oh, shocked oh right now. <laughs> I love Tidbit is going to be the villain of the campaign because they're in the middle. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. No one asks her. So, no one knows what she's thinking. It's always Sorry, the Tim quiet me. student. Oh shit, Tibbets here. It doesn't say anything. Oh, if the check succeeds, the target <laughs> realizes that the phantom okay. phantasm is an illusion and the spell is. Yeah. I've seen illusions my whole life. I was gonna uh, conjure him. I don't know how big Haytham was, but like our size, Haytham, just kind of in front of them to kind of spook them. Obviously it didn't work. <laughs> When a spell is cast uh, and, and Helm resists it, he'll look to Allura. Get to Empire. Immediately, we're under attack. And he'll, uh, he'll run will defensive She nod and Allura. spring into action. Yeah, uh, great right. sword out, and he's, he's going to take a defensive position behind Allura. And I think we could... Pick up next time by rolling initiative. Do we want to roll initiative now? Or... <laughs> oh man, oh. Me, Nick, against the world. <laughs> I don't want to wait another week. Yeah. Can, can we go a little longer? We still got half an hour. Or you know, I gotta call it. Is oh, man. Tidbit is here. Is, yeah. Let's not forget about tidbit. I thought we were gonna get to the main campaign next week. Damn it. <laughs> I mean, this is I mean I'm definitely going to make another character. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, do I do oh, I want to annoy so all dead. of my friends so forever? Dead. No. <laughs> two v two v six. Yeah, we're dead. Well, we don't know about tidbit. <laughs> a tidbit is a wild card, but that's still Dolan well, could be on our side. Look, um, I didn't Dolan. say that to you guys. I just left. find you annoying. You know, I, I completely forgot about tidbit. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Tolan's just gonna quietly, quietly uh, go up to Mirabelle and Graynor and be like, um, "It's probably a good idea to just leave," and then he's just gonna walk away. Tolan just bounces. That's probably the smartest thing to do. <laughs> he, he moves to Mist Haven and joins uh fucking the other gnome over there. Oh no, he's he he's gonna make sure Mirabelle gets out. He wants that cane him off. Um, the weapon has <laughs> nothing to do with the canum. Callum? But her going... Uh, uh, Callum. It, yeah, it, that's the word. Callum. Kynum. Kynum. Callum. Kynum. <laughs> oh my god! He changed his name! 
All right. So I want to get rid of these calories. <laughs> All the bad <laughs> calories have to go. <laughs> oh, well, not so everybody. Not Hi, ben. Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. So, Hi, Ben. What are we? What are we playing? Uh, we're playing week? this, and we're gonna fucking PvP, <laughs> Rachel. That's what we're doing. We're PvPing, and you have to choose sides. No, you don't. Oh, no one's asked it. me to choose <laughs> sides. You haven't given me the opportunity. I am very attractive. She was there, and you ignored her. <laughs> I know. And then people were like, "Oh man, let's talk to Tidbit." No one talked to Tidbit. And I'm just here like I'm I tried. Team. You know what? I think your mic cut out. I don't think you were talking to me. I yeah, yeah I meant to talk to Granny or after. <laughs> and I just didn't get time. You were, you know what? You were like, tongue tied for that whole session. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone forgets about tidbit. It is about tidbit. Tidbit is the balancing factor. What if tidbit is the BBEG? You know what? what if Tibbet is empire in disguise? What the fuck? Oh, shit. This it was is all a test. becomes a villain. I oh, was kind to Tibbet. To that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> she has this magical growing seed that she stowed away <laughs> and she doesn't know what it does. And honestly, she's about ready to put it into someone's food. I, I'm going to take the, I'm gonna take the gift. Experiment. I'm going to take the gift from Evie. It's <laughs> it, Homelander's son? Is that the seed that you're carrying? <laughs> the new Superman of this campaign. Yes. What if it's like Little Shop of Horrors? Oh, feed me, Seymour. Feed me, tidbit. <laughs> feed me, tidbit. <laughs> Just a tidbit, tidbit. I like I to imagine that more. this is the this is the um, starting point for the magical flask. That this was the first monster it contained. <laughs> that eventually <laughs> sucked up Agrimar. Is that what, <laughs> that what you're saying? Yeah, that that same flask. Like oh I feel like just... tidbit That's... is the is the celestial creature that was in the bottle. <laughs> I was all a goddamn test to see if you could recognize one. And you didn't. You keep ignoring tidbits. I'm not good at investigation, perception, or insight. So I'm or sorry. Or talking to people. No, I, I'm a paladin with a 12 in charisma. I'm not good at talking to people. No one remembers tidbit. I love tidbit. I just <laughs> don't true. always remember that you're there. <laughs> no, no that's fair. I have corner. been, I have been quiet during this game. A little quiet, little quiet, little quiet. <sighs> I if just Tidbit went... ever wants to go pick mushrooms, tell I'm you what, <laughs> I can't, I can't wait to hit. Litly with my great sword as hard as I fucking can. Let's do it now. She's a snake in the grass. <laughs> Let's what what's stopping us? You don't need stopping us from seeing two colors. You guys are making these Yo, I rolled two fourteen. In my head, it it came from one of the two people ahead of us. Like that's you that's kind that's There's where a Laura's lot of heads at. that are gonna roll in the next couple <laughs> sessions. <laughs> No. Uh, civilians uh, left and right. Me. All it just needs is dirt. Why should I get cleaved into? I feel like if anything, outwardly, we're all working I should together. Be, I You're the only the most... one that's actively sowing distant. Uh, that's, uh, probably the part of... that's not necessarily true. <laughs> I'm more like the president of the ethics committee that nobody wants to invite. Screw to the dinner ethics. Party. This Wait, is from the empire. Kobe? That's are heretics. You from the office. Oh my god, I'm HRT. <laughs> Off of their head. I love that comparison, and I will take that hatred, but I don't necessarily think that you can say that I'm sowing the seeds of discord because I'm just asking questions, y'all. You well, and the dwarf. Oh my god, you guys are so, you're, you're, you're machinations. 
But no one realizes that because no one asks Tidbit what they're doing. What if looking <laughs> you know, Tidbit doesn't yeah. also want to talk to people. So we're literally, literally sowing like seeds of shadow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, actually? <laughs> Screw it, Ryan. Tidbit like it. eats the seed. Write that <gasps> down. <This> is- <laughs> <laughs> no, you already said I get 10 gold for it. It's well, it's know. honestly a really great analogy for the Empire. They're more obsessed about like people asking questions than actual chaos happening right beneath their noses. You know, yeah, it questions are dangerous. But Lydia's been asking questions, but she's been asking too many of the right questions. You got to play a Seneca, be the wolf in sheep's clothing, or be the <laughs> idiot. Like tidbit. I think <laughs> there's an abolith that's, that's causing trouble. Wait. In this area, that's causing Must people be an to ask abolith. questions. Probably an illithid. It may be an illithid. There's too many brain things going on, and Helm is not having brain things going on. That's for sure. Ooh. Yeah, he's too, for that. he's too beautiful. He's too beautiful for that. What if you drop the, the evil goo into the well here, and we just destroy oh. the entire empire? Oh, he's so evil. Oh my god. I will not bad. let this empire fall because of happen. you assholes. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> to- to- Remember to- how much trauma I- I- <laughs> well caused last campaign and this campaign you're going to be the ones wanting to poison the well. 100%. I, I say this for the bottom of the oh well for the party empire. Members, two party members like we're like <laughs> we're not going to be around this uh, for much longer. Full circle. Yeah, no, totally from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to play a different character. So whatever happens, happens. A hundred percent. You are actually the, the poster child for the resistance. You should be the person that everyone's like, and this is why Empire needs to fall. People like you, Lara. That should be like the best convincing tactic she's for everybody. She's so cool. <laughs> God, even Alora's gotten ahead of me. God, nobody remembers Helm the Beautiful. <laughs> The next character, Rachel. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. What? What? Are you actually eating the seed? Do we not get to know? We don't even know. Shit! (laughs) Betrayal. My next character, if it makes you feel better, is someone who's super loyal to the Empire, and then starts (laughs) questioning everything. A little too late, Jeremy. A little too late. (laughs) I thought. I thought this could be stuff. There might not be an empire anymore, Jeremy, because we of your decisions. Bro, he stopped the moon. It's fine. <laughs> he can deal with some level three people. That's what Agrabar thought, three. and then somebody <laughs> shot off the whole planet. That shit happens. Oh, yeah, shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like... Uh... <laughs> there is... What, what is that fucker's name? You got it, Rachel. What is it? Atriox, Herald of the Great Worm, Keeper of Portals, Open of Ways, and Lord of Dragons, the one who shuts off the planet from all the multiverse? No, honestly, I forgot what I was going to say halfway through, Lucas. <laughs> I was hoping like that pause would allow me to correct course and to, you know, stabilize the plane, but it didn't. So it didn't It land. didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. But there's people that do that. <laughs> Wait, but are we done in the Empire? Or are we coming back here? We don't know until shit happens. I think we got one more session of this. Oh, if we resolve what happens with the sword. Fuck it. If the sword gets the Empire, it's one. If if the sword doesn't get the Empire, it's a different... Oh, we got to choose your own adventure, guys. Tidbit is a mad scientist. Tidbit, we'll oh, Draven's super reliable friends are nowhere to be found yet. This is I great. honestly <laughs> think the most chaotic way they're is obviously the sword standing the right in front of me. These are obviously Draven's friends. Hey, quick question. And they're going to get cut by a giant fucking sword or two of them. Is it okay if I eat the seed? Would that derail anything? Is that <laughs> just, just, do it. Path. just do it. Do it. Fucking do it. Do it. No, I just. I thought your jaw already unhinged and you I already unhinged it, but I just want to make sure everyone's clipped it. When you were told you no. Actually, Rachel? You specifically said don't eat the goo. 
No, but Rachel, you, yes. I, my my Rachel, new character needs you to do that. Can you do that? Kermit, Can you yes. eat the seed, Die please? for a reason. Okay, but legitimately, legitimately, is it okay if Tidbit eats the seed? I you, don't want to derail have, anything. You have a precedence Rachel, for I eating love weird you shit. If you eat the seed. Okay, I'm going to eat the seed. <laughs> yeah, I don't do, like do weird shit. Like hey, I'm st I, I, we're still recording. Okay, this is still, <laughs> I'm still like... recording. <laughs> do it. Do it. I see how it is. Do it. Okay. okay, so, I mean, you know, <laughs> if things are happening, then things are happening, right? There's right. a lot of things going Blitty. on. She's going to eat. If Blitty is going to go ahead and, or not Blitty, sorry. If Tidbit is going to go ahead and eat, to drink from That's her flask. Her. <laughs> She's going to dig it out, eat it, see what happens. She's got, her back is turned. She's, <laughs> she's a mad scientist. She has a hypothesis. Um, I love the picture you have for her, too. Just, she's so a bad scientist. She's just got this big <laughs> smile. Yeah, I, I, I would like to imagine slightly unhinged and occasionally like, ah! no, sorry, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, kind of like kind of like the cockroach from Monsters, uh, Monsters vs. Aliens. That's her whole vibe. I love him. Um, but yes, she unhinges her jaw like she with like, with like a dirty finger. She, she's her yeah. back is turned, and she's going to take out that weird looking seed, and she's just going to like look at it and go, "My hypothesis is that you know I'll be turned into a monster, but I'll be fine." Um, and she'll eat it. So Rachel, <clears throat> I want yeah. you to roll me a. Would you like a D four or a D six? For the number of rounds that Tidbit has left. Oh. Oh. Which is, which is quick more death. Chaotic. Quick death. D4. Did you just commit suicide? Oh, wow. Oh, fuck it. Herbicide is what I think <laughs> is the, the term. Like, yes, the most, the absolute most tension there could possibly oh, be. Six rounds until you're dead. Is oh, it? Damn. Are we sure that she'll die? Yeah, she's. hundred oh, percent. I think a lot of people are gonna die. Real quick. I think she's gonna how, become like a monster. Like the how many, we how many people this will spread with me, Ryan? I want to at least take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to at least take eight people. I'm with on me. that list. Four. I think Tidbit <laughs> might be a tiny beard oh. and be an ent. Tidbit, you are certainly welcome to try at the top of next week. No! But <laughs> if we can get a little bit of a preview into what's about to happen to Tidbit as we fade back to the party darting across these ruinous mountains back around this campground, as uh, this dark elf of this shadened Mirabelle, her gaze shifts with a bit of a much darker tone as she remembers from the inky blackness of the shadows that monstrous, that monstrous figure which stepped out of his shadowy concealment, revealing his true form. It's serpentine. Its body elongated and sinuous, his form shifting and twisting like that of a phantom. His eyes, two burning embers in the darkness, piercing through the gore of that girl. His hair billowing madly, writhing like twisted snakes. In his hands, a colossal war horn, its surface etched with runes that glue with an eerie otherworldly light. The horn was so much larger than the man himself, and its mouthpiece wide enough to swallow a man whole. Oh, that's it's oh my god, I'm so excited! Oh Wait, what is that? Uh, that's for Vosh, you guys always that's forget the That's for Vosh! Ah, ah, I'm turning it into a bottle! No, this thing is he drank oh the- god. He drank the blood of the tree. Oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? The, wait, that's hold the, on. the Gol Golthos Golthos tree. Is no, that what wait, that is? wait. That's the guy hold. that helped Nari in hell, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. This is a vampire guy with oh the with the throne. He's the guy that was trapped beneath the foot, and Nari let him out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you guys, he just. Use it as a blood portal to step into <laughs> this area. 
Oh my oh, god, I thought we were done with this dude. I thought we killed all the remnants. Oh no! Uh, oh, no he like survived in Everest. Uh, it's actually pretty sad. We're all talking never would have heard, no matter how many times I brought him up, you guys are Fucking always like, Druids. Rachel, from? how could you eat it? Why would you Why do that? Why would you do that? <laughs> no one's paying attention to Tidbit. What else was Tidbit going to do? No one not not eat a weird down shit. In history, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> Tidbit's a mad scientist. Want to know why she's in the black? Yeah, <laughs> she was she's in the black for things. sure. That's right. <laughs> oh ah! my gosh. You know, Please honestly, speed. every I'm, single I'm... time I felt ignored by the party, yeah. none of my characters would live past a day, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> and when you well, eat an object first like a long time. by Thrabosh's magic, that has been actively transmuting the number of items and Beasts that he himself is transfiguring. We have to just—we have to destroy the world, like guys. Really we can't. We have to That's suicide the world. Oh my god! We don't know that. <laughs> we can't <laughs> let the whole planet Jackson. survive at this point. You know what? It's perfect because this party will know as much as the last party knew about Thrabosh. Nothing. No one did you learn about. <laughs> Good night, well, Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Oh no, if people were paying attention to Tidbit, maybe they would have stopped from eating the scene. You know what? Well, we deserve it. You're I correct. Mean, to be fair, I didn't expect him to show up again. Oh, no, absolutely not. But is everyone, um, is everyone okay with me eating that scene? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As long yeah. as you don't continue uh, yeah. it in your next character, I'm fine with it. Oh, no, oh. absolutely. <laughs> I want you to eat uh, in character, you No, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, in character, no, definitely not. Why the fuck are you eating black shit on the side of the road, you crazy person? <laughs> because tar tastes funny. I, I, I love agree. the synchronicity that Nari drank blood and, and you know he appeared and then Tidbit drank blue goo and he appeared. This is perfect. I'm so happy <laughs> there are, there are a crazy it. amount of parallels here in Mist Haven because Seneca efficiently uh worships whatever the dude that Nari worshipped. Provost. Right? Provost. <laughs> Kronos. Oh, Kronos? Oh, that's yeah, funny. Yeah, that, that's where her warlock powers come from, those Kronos. Oh, that's I kinda amazing! Wanna want, I, I want Ryan to do a Wisconsin Canadian accent for Tidbit oh. when they become the main villain. Wait, <laughs> that's what wait, I'm looking forward hold to. On. Hold on, is Tidbit going to be like the, the puppet? You set this up, oh Rachel. There's consequences to your actions. <laughs> You if you're gonna be, gonna be the bad if you're guy, gonna be dumb, be prepared for them to be <laughs> a villain. What was it? Right. What was it that Rachel said? I don't want another Blanche from this. You made a Blanche <laughs> for Ryan, and oh, he's no. worse than I no. am. No, Laura's no, Blanche. No. He lets me real. I love uh, Blanche. Uh, oh, no, does that Blanche. make me uh, a, a fucking? Uh, what's the Aarakocra, the Summer Maid? Yeah. Yes. Who? Who's that? <laughs> oh God, what's that? Who'd you make, Summer? Who what? Farah. Who Farrah. was her? Farah oh, the Aarakocra. Oh, God. Oh, we're Blanche and Farah. But, oh, like, dude, just think. If we live and we get this sword oh, to, to Empire, we get to be bad guys. Like, I Ryan gets to take control so of our bad. characters, and we get to be bad guys. We're going to... Nick, we're going to survive this and be bad guys. I was a good guy. You know, you know in the, if, the if you want my actual time. opinion, no, fascist. <laughs> but <laughs> the amount of times 100%. my characters have become villains is two. And if I had a nickel for every time my <laughs> characters became villains, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot. The, but considering the, how many characters. Then maybe you should break the meme and go against type, Rachel. I like I, the... I thought Blanche was going to be a funny character, and then I and didn't so want to play her anymore. <laughs> Tidbit was a funny She was character. funny, too. I like the idea of uh, this being the perfect backstory for an adventurer. Like, I had a small <laughs> village on the outside of the capital, and then one day, a group of people came through. They started fighting, and a demon was summoned. I will find the traitorous Tidbit, and I will kill her. I <laughs> already have a character belt. <laughs> Jeremy, I already have a character belt. <laughs> I really want to play like another unhinged scientist, but 
who will not eat stuff. Can, can you be a Jethro type? I want to see. I want to see you play a Jethro type scientist. Wait, All wait, right, like... time to go put a kid to bed. Later, okay. y'all. Bye, Nick. <laughs> I would love to see you, Rachel. I want. I want to test you. I want. I. I want to put this to you. Okay. I want to see right. you play a Jethro type character, who's all about like fucking books. Fuck. Well, <laughs> yeah, you can fuck books too. <laughs> but, but I want to see you on. I want to see you on the like the learned side and like uh, like a third party. I would love to see you on a third party to to the to the main party. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I'll do it. I'll do it. I do you have think, do you think you can do that? Party. Yes. What do you mean by third party? Well, like like Jethro Jethro is he's he's pro uh fire keepers, you know, like what the main party is trying to do and, and you know, you know, pro good for everyone, but at the same time he's like his ultimate goal is history and, and 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 the lore of the world itself which is a third party to what's currently going on i think okay. he would play a good character that is okay with what the current party is doing but not necessarily like a, a pro or con like a neutral party like a switzerland okay, yeah. to the to the party no i could totally do that I think that I think you could play that very well. I, I'm I'm enjoying it. I have a character in mind. I, and tidbit, favorites. tidbit is a wild card, and I love it. <laughs> no one asked fucking me. tidbit! No one asked me. You brought back, <laughs> you brought back that fucking vampire asshole. Well, how was I supposed to know? No <laughs> because one there's consequences to your actions, Rachel. Well, how am I supposed to know that? How am I supposed to know that? How? Oh my god, no you have to expect it. it with Ryan. Ryan's gonna tie everything back into something he's already done. Well, you know how much I don't read anything. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm That's the same okay. way. I give Ryan too many ideas. Yeah, anyway. I have to grade stuff. Oh, go grade stuff. some papers. I have 200 assignments. I have 30. Oh, shit. All right. All right, all right Rachel. Yeah. You have a good week, and I'll see you next yeah, week. Next week. <laughs> Later. Bye.